ready to unlock the mathematical magic behind machine learning, imagine turning raw data into powerful insights and predictive models that drive innovation. If you're excited, you're in the right place. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Knowledge Academy's YouTube channel. And today, we'll uncover the essential mathematics that power machine learning. In this first part, we'll explore data types, linear algebra, and calculus. And in the next part, we will learn about statistics and probability. So let's jump right in. Understanding data types is crucial in machine learning. Data types determine the kind of values that variables can hold and what operations can be performed on them. Let's go through the main data types you'll encounter. First is numerical data types are used to represent quantities and perform calculations. They can be categorized into integers, which are whole numbers such as minus 3, 0, 42, float, which are basically numbers with decimal points like 3.14 or minus 0 0.1, complex number, which are numbers with a real and an imaginary part, such as 3 plus 4i. They are used in many places like whole numbers are useful for counting items or indexing, Floating point numbers are used when precision is required. Complex numbers are used in advanced calculations, such as in signal processing. Next data type is ordinal data types. It represents categories with a clear ordering. They help with ranking or sorting items where the order matters, but not the exact difference between them. Ordinal are categories with a meaningful order, such as small, medium and large. For example, ranking customer satisfaction as low, medium or high helps in understanding levels of satisfaction. Next is Boolean data types. They are used for binary classification and decision making. They can only hold two values, true or false. It is essential for making simple decisions within algorithms. For instance, checking if a condition is met can be represented as true or false. Next is textual data types handle text-based data. They are used for storing and manipulating textual information. String and character. Strings and characters are used to process and manipulate text, for example, analyzing customer reviews or extracting keywords from documents. Next is compound data types can hold multiple items and are used to structure and organize data. Types of compound data types are a list which are ordered collections of items, like 1, 2, 3 written in square bracket. Tuple. These are immutable ordered collections, like 1, 2, 3, which are written between parentheses. Dictionary are key value pairs. And sets are unordered collections of unique items. Lists, tuples, dictionaries, and sets are used to organize and manipulate collections of data. For example, a list can store multiple customer orders while a dictionary can map customer ideas to their details. Last one is specialized data types handle specific kinds of data that require unique representations, like date and time, and byte. Mr. Softy and time data types are crucial for time series analysis and scheduling tasks. Bytes are used for low-level data manipulation, such as reading and writing binary files. Now after data types. Next, let's talk about linear algebra. Linear algebra is the backbone of many machine learning algorithms. Here are the key concepts you need to know. First is, linear equations form the basis of linear algebra. They are used to represent relationships between variables. A linear equation like 2x plus 3, y equal to 6, represents a straight line when plotted on a graph. In machine learning, linear equations are used in models like linear regression. Let's understand how to solve a linear equation problem with Python using NumPy. Library. Suppose we want to solve a linear equation of the form ax plus by equal to c, where a, b and c are given coefficients. Your goal is to define a function that calculates the value of i in terms of x for this equation. The function should take an array of x values as input and return the corresponding y values. First import numpy, then define coefficient a, b, c, then implement a function here it is. Solve linear function in parenthesis x. This takes NumPy array of x values, then computes the value using the formula as shown, then print the values of x and y. In this code, we define the coefficients of a linear equation 2x plus 3, y equal to 6. The function solve linear equation calculates y for given x values. We then use this function to solve for y when x is 0, 1 and 2 and print the results. 
Next is vectors. Vectors are ordered lists of numbers which can represent points in space. They are fundamental in representing data and performing operations. Vectors like these are used to represent data points or directions in space. In machine learning, vectors are used to represent features of data points. Let's see how you can use this with example. Suppose we are tasked with performing basic vector operations using NumPy. Specifically, you need to define a vector, compute its magnitude, and find the corresponding unit vector. Define a vector using a NumPy array then compute the magnitude of the vector using the formula shown in your screen. After that, calculate the unit vector by dividing the original vector by its magnitude. Print the original vector, its magnitude, and the unit vector. In this code, we define a vector, 1, 2, 3. We calculate its magnitude using nop.lin alg, which is the short form of linear algebra, then .norm, and then compute the unit vector by dividing the original vector by its magnitude. We print the vector, its magnitude, and the unit vector. Next one is matrices. These are two-dimensional arrays of numbers used to represent data sets or transformations. They are crucial for handling multiple linear equations and transformations. Let's have a small recap of how mathematical operations are done on matrices. Matrix addition is performed by adding the corresponding elements of the matrices. This operation is only possible if the matrices have the same dimensions. Matrix subtraction is similar to addition, but involves subtracting the corresponding elements of the matrices. This operation is also only possible if the matrices have the same dimensions. Matrix multiplication involves multiplying rows of the first matrix by columns of the second matrix and summing the products. This operation is only defined when the number of columns in the first matrix is equal to the number of rows in the second matrix. Matrix division is not as straightforward as addition, subtraction, or multiplication. It typically involves multiplying by the inverse of a matrix. This operation is only possible if the matrix has same number of rows and columns and invertible. Now let's see how we can do these operations in Python. Suppose we want to perform basic matrix operations using NumPy. Specifically, you need to define a matrix, compute its transpose, find its inverse, and calculate its determinants. First define a matrix using a NumPy array, then compute the transpose of the matrix. After that calculate the inverse of the matrix, compute the determinant of the matrix as shown, print the original matrix, its transpose, its inverse, and its determinant. This code, we define a matrix 1, 2, 3, 4. We then perform several matrix operations, calculating the transpose, the inverse, and the determinant. We print the original matrix, its transpose, inverse, and determinant. That's it for the linear algebra part. Finally, let's move on to calculus. Calculus is the mathematical study of continuous change and it is essential for understanding and optimizing machine learning models. Calculus is divided into two main branches, differential calculus, partial differential calculus, and integral calculus. Let's first learn about differential calculus. Differential calculus deals with the concept of a derivative, which represents a function's rate of change. In machine learning, Derivatives help us find the slope of the loss function and are crucial for optimization algorithms like gradient descent. The derivative of a function gives us the slope at any point. For example, the derivative of x is 2x, which tells us how steep the curve is at any point x. In machine learning, this helps us minimize the loss function using gradient descent. Let's look at an example how you can calculate this in Python. For this, we will be using SimPAI module. So suppose we are performing symbolic mathematics using SimPy. Specifically, you need to define a variable and a function, and then calculate the derivative of the function with respect to the variable. So first we import SimPy, then we define a symbolic variable using SimPy, a to this define a function of the symbolic variable, then calculate the derivative of the function with respect to the variable. Now print the original function and its derivative. In this code, we use SimPy to define a function as shown. We then calculate its derivative using esp.diff and print the function and its derivative. This shows how to compute derivatives programmatically, which is useful for understanding and implementing gradient descent. Now let's move on to partial derivatives. When dealing with functions of multiple variables, we use partial derivatives to see how changing one variable affects the function while keeping others constant. For example, the function given in the screen has the partial derivatives as shown. Derivatives are crucial in multivariable calculus. 
For instance, if a function x, comma, y is equal to x square plus y square, for this the partial derivative with respect to x is 2x and with respect to y is 2y. This helps in optimizing functions with multiple variables in machine learning. Suppose we are tasked with performing symbolic mathematics using SymPy. Specifically, you need to define two variables and a multivariable function, and then calculate the partial derivatives of the function with respect to each variable. For this, first define symbolic variables using SymPy, then define a multivariable function using these variables. After that, calculate the partial derivatives of the function with respect to each variable, then print the original function and its partial derivatives. In this code, we use SymPy to define a function x, y is equal to x square plus y square. We then calculate its partial derivatives with respect to x and y using sp.diff and print the function and its partial derivatives. This demonstrates how to compute partial derivatives, which are useful for optimizing functions with multiple variables. Next is integral calculus. It deals with the concept of an integral, which represents the accumulation of quantities. In machine learning, integrals can help us understand the cumulative effect of changes and optimize models. The integral of function x equal to x squared from 0 to 1 is 1 by 3. Integrals help us find the area under a curve which represents the accumulation of quantities. For example, integrating x squared from 0 to 1 gives us 1 by 3, which is the area under the curve between these points. Let's execute this concept in Python. Suppose we are tasked with performing symbolic mathematics using SymPy. Specifically, you need to define a variable and a function and then calculate the definite integral of the function over a given interval. For this, define a symbolic variable using SymPy, then define a function of the symbolic variable. After that, calculate the definite integral of the function over the interval 0 to 1, then in the end print the original function and the result of the integral. In this code, we use SymPy to define a function x equal to x square. We then calculate its integral from 0 to 1 using sp.integrate and print the function and its integral. This demonstrates how to compute integrals programmatically, which is useful for understanding the cumulative effect of changes. That is it from the calculus part. And a wrap for part one of our series on the mathematics used in machine learning. We cover data types, linear algebra and calculus, which are foundational concepts you'll need to understand as we dive deeper into machine learning algorithms. In the next part, we'll dive into the fascinating world of statistics and probability and see how they are used in machine learning. So buckle up and stay focused as we cover the basics before moving on to more advanced topics. See you in the next video of our machine learning playlist. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more exciting and informative content. Don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss an update.